Hi there, welcome to movie 12. We are going to do the neck area and the shirt area on this movie. And I want to um, first hit the F key so I can move my screen around. What I want to is to show you when I turn off this reference layer that I've actually, um, let me turn off the shirt reference too. I've actually laid out the very simple um, neck area what you know we what we've come to find out are the or I've determined are the foundation layers and I just want to turn those off right now okay so I'm gonna turn them off all the way down to here I put in a neck foundation fill which is the most important thing on the whole file I have my neck um, uh, path which is going to be right here in the channels palette that you can see right there okay and that neck area path is um, simply uh, let me turn on the reference so we can see it that neck area path is um, let me really zoom in on this I drew it to one pixel inside the shirt in other words I included the shirt in it because I'm gonna put the shirt on a um, on a layer that is going to overlap towards the other side of the pixel because the worst thing that can happen is you have a little white area between the two shapes so see how the neck is going farther than it needs to so I'm going to actually put the shirt above the neck in the layer palette okay so um, let me turn off the reference now and let me show you the foundation layer that I painted and I have a little neck reference Thing right there so we can see how this is all looking let me move the swatches palette out of the way and let's um, zoom in to the point where I can at least show you what I've done and then we're gonna go put the texture on together and then we're gonna do the shirt entirely from the base value and I'm gonna paint what I see and then hopefully that won't take about half an hour or over half an hour and we'll be to the point where it's done because I, I did promise that I want to show you everything and you have the right to fast forward or you have the ability to fast forward at any time so if I toggle on and off the neck layer I'm sorry not that one this one you can see that I grabbed a medium value um, the value that I see I'm hitting the B key and holding the alter option key I grabbed this value right there now what I did was I then painted let me turn this off I then painted the next layer Oh, that's the freckles let me close the face here's that's the texture let me go to the neck area which there's my neck folder and here is my neck fill that I'm turning off and on so the neck fill too I just want you to see that um, of course when I painted I had command H on okay so I'm putting command H on right now but so you know I have a selection active and we can keep our eye on the reference over to the right there then I just painted in the next layer and what I did was of course I was selected on the neck fill 3 layer I painted with watch the foreground color this was my original value see the foreground color right there that was my next value down so that's the value that I saw when I turned on the um, the layer right there so uh, with this on painting at 5% on the flow I simply and let me put in a layer I'm gonna throw away in a second all right I'm gonna throw that away in a second I'm gonna go back and do what I did before I'm painting at I'm gonna put this at 8 on the flow and make sure my brush is all the way soft and I'm going to make sure the brush is big enough and I'm gonna lay in this value right here in fact let me um, turn off the reference layer and show you that if I turn off that layer 3 look at it with the layer on there right now without the layer um, without it, almost anything on layer 50 which I'm gonna throw away in a minute okay so with this mask layer um, with the reference layer on I'm gonna block in this color everywhere so I'm now gonna hit that color right here and then we are going to go and put in several other layers and it's okay that that get darker let me finish that statement we're gonna put in several other layers that get darker now look at how I'm starting to get the good flow of value in there and I'm painting all the way through this area I'll make the brush get a little smaller now I'm gonna to go to a little bit darker value I'll paint right on the same layer but I'll only put in a little bit of this darker value now look at how 
you, you weren't seeing anything go on there, but look at how I'm actually now putting in that beautiful tone where the neck is getting darker. Now, let me go to this value, which is right underneath the neck, right there. See what I'm grabbing right there? Or I could have turned on this one and grabbed right there. You follow what I'm saying? So let's turn, let's leave this on. Let's click to a layer 51. Okay, and I'm going to throw these both away in a minute because I've already done this. All right, so now I'm painting with this darker value down this area, right through this area, right like this, right like this, and then I'm going to paint right here and then right down that right hand side of the top of the neck right there. I'll make the brush um, slightly bigger in a second, but now look at how I'm starting to really get that neck to be in the depth. Now I'm going to put in layer 50 two and I'm going to get the darker value going. So the higher the layers, the less the paint or the smaller the paint or you work your way to your values. Whether you're working your way to your lighter values or your dark values in this case would make sense if I worked my way to my darker value. I'm going to come down the edge with this. Let me make the brush bigger and let's come this way and now look in a couple of seconds. Look at how we've started to really lay out that neck. Okay, and we've really laid out the values for the neck. So when you paint, just understand it's like a mixture between layers. Now look at how nicely that is looking, especially when I click off and on this here. Now let me throw away, show you that I already did it. Let me throw away layer 52, 51, and 50. So now they're away, and now here, let me zoom in. Here is what I had painted before. Here's neck fill three. So you can see how I've got just exactly what I just had before. And then I had a neck, um, I put in a little bit better color right there. Then I have this called the shadow one and the shadow two. Now I want you to see what I did right here on the layer mask for this one right here. I actually painted on the layer mask and let me um, disable the layer mask. So I'm gonna disable it. See how when I wanted to bring back that neck wrinkle right there, see that? There's no neck wrinkle there. Well, when I click this on, you can see the neck wrinkle right there. Now, let me take a few seconds out to show you where I actually have the neck wrinkle. So here, it's called neck wrinkle edit. Now, let me click it on. Do you see how I have that neck wrinkle right here? I'm going to point and I'm going to hit the P key and I'm going to point to that line. I wanted to paint. Uh, the reason I drew this big shape, I'll finish my statement in a second. See this big shape I drew that goes like this? I really only wanted to use that much of it right here. Now let me hold the command key and toggle that on and off so you can see it. See how I just want to activate it and then paint a little bit of black on the layer mask to remove that tone? Now, I'm, I probably should do that in front of you, so I'm going to show you in a second how I can click on this layer mask right here. Let me turn off the reference layer, and I'm going to just hit Command A to select all, and then Command Delete to fill it back up with white. Okay, so I filled up the layer mask back with white. Let me make a selection out of that neck wrinkle right there. Now, let's turn it on. I'm going to hit Command H so you don't have to see it, but that's... I want to, what, what I'm trying to say is I want to add a, an automatic feather to this and I think I'm going to add about four pixels to that, to the feather on that selection. So let's go shift F6 and let's add what's on my other screen. Let me bring it over here. Let's add four pixels to the feather and then let me hit command H. Now I'm going to turn, I'm going to make sure I'm selected on the layer mask. I'm going to take my paintbrush and I'm going to make it small. Now. I'm going to run it like this. Remember, the selection is right there. See it? So when I actually paint this, look at how I can go one, two, three, four. Now when I turn this off, you're going to see how I have that wrinkle there. Now, what I want to do is to Command Z back once, twice, three times. I'll even go four. Now, watch how if I toggle this on and off, you can also go like this. I'm painting right where you can see that layer mask being affected. Now I had much more control of where and how much paint to put on there by having this on, to tell you the truth. Okay. Now 
I can't, and let me say this right, because this is the way my artist brain is thinking. Because I'm only painting at 5% and because I'm on a layer mask, I can't really ruin it, right? Whoops, I made a mistake there. I can't really ruin it. So I can take away too much. Look, I'll take away too much back here. See, I'm taking it away too much. Just hit the X key and put it back in. No big deal. Now, let's back off on this and let's see if I made the wrinkle too harsh or whatever. So now, Look at how I have that and it looks too harsh. I actually should um, come back with the wrinkle a little bit more, meaning I should um, taint, um, let me hit the X key and put the brush a little bit bigger and then I'm gonna move in and then I'm gonna actually bring it back into the neck area. Now, when I, I think it's too harsh. So let me command D the selection and while we're clicked, I'm gonna, um, there's a little trick in uh, Photoshop. I'm gonna option or alt click on the layer mask and I can isolate out the layer mask. Did you hear what I said? You can actually see what's on the layer mask. You can alter option back on it and you put it back to regular view mode, okay? I don't have to see what I'm doing here to know when I look at it, it's gonna be affected. So I wanna to go to filter blur and I wanna Gaussian blur the layer mask with no selection active. Now let me bring that window back over here and let's show what I'm talking about. Let's zoom in. This is without a five pixel feather. This is with a five pixel feather. So you can Gaussian blur the layer mask too. I, I could go as high as I want and I, I can get the, the effect that I want. Now, I think that that looks pretty cool. I think that looks really nice. And it's starting to get the nuance of what that needs to be. Now. Let me go to the next shadow here and look at how I actually added more dark around the neck. So let me turn this off. And I only have four layers above the fill. There's um, shadow one layer, shadow two layer. Here's my neck color layer where I actually came back with a little bit of this value here, a lighter value here and a lighter value here. And then there's the first one that went dark. So aside from the foundation color, you got one, two, three, four, and you're done. Now, I want to go, um, oh, I actually had a neck fix layer because I wanted to bring back a little bit more of this value. If you can see what I'm pointing at, I wanted to come back and put a little bit more of this value in and I did it on what I tell you is my neck fix layer. Now, when I click this back and forth, look at how I've got that pretty darn good. Now, let's put the texture in. So what I did was, if you zoom into this, I got these textures, let me find them on here. They are right here. I have, and I'm gonna click on them. I have a neck red texture. You can see that all I did to make that happen was grab this red right where I'm pointing right there. It's all I did. Now how I did it was, let me click back on this. All I did was make sure I was selected on my neck right there. I made sure that I was isolating color range, just like that. You see how I clicked on the neck fill layer to isolate the color range, or I could have clicked on the neck um, shape over here in my, there's the neck shape right there in my channels palette. Okay, see, see that? So now let me go back to this. So what I wanna do is click to the clicky copy, go isolate color range, zoom into color range and grab that red. Now let's put it on about 80 like I said and look it's got all that neat red texture right there. Now even though it doesn't look like it has all this little texture segregated from the other browner texture or tanner texture it does. Okay so that's what the selection is trying to tell me because that's the color right there that I eye dropped. Okay long story short let me show you the textures that I zoomed that I got when I did this. Let me go down to the bottom. Here is the neck red as we said. Here is the neck dark. So I actually got a little bit more dark in that corner and then this is the darker value. So I'm gonna click back on to my texture one layer, turn off the neck clicky copy and then we can see the texture as it goes in. Let me move up the layer palette so we can see that better here. Okay, now I can get to my neck fill layers right there, okay? And then, so I'm gonna click to my neck texture one layer. Let's make a selection of that 
right there, which is the reds. Let's zoom in to the reds and I'm going to put in my airbrush or in my brush that color right there. Okay, so there's no, if you didn't grab it before, you can certainly grab it now. So let me hit command what? To hide it, H, yes. Let me now make the brush bigger and now let's paint. I'm not just gonna blast it in here. I want to paint that color on here. Let me make sure I'm painting on the right thing and let's make sure that I'm putting that color in here. Then I'm gonna get a little bit darker with that color. I wanna um, go grab a little bit darker of that value. And I'm gonna come in here and go a little bit darker on the color picker, okay? Look, a little bit darker on the color picker. Because I can always lower the opacity of it. Now there is the texture coming in. Do you see how the texture's coming in here? It's coming in over here. And let me grab that color again and let's now come into that color right here. That's beautiful texture. I mean, let me zoom in. You can hardly see it, but isn't that the key towards that texture? That texture is beautiful. Let me see if I can come in like that. I wish it were showing up a little bit more. So I may have to go re-grab that color. And if I'm having a hard time isolating out that color, there is a trick you can do in color range to get that color to be better. Okay, let me see if I have that neck dark color. All right, I'm gonna need a secondary one. And I think I'm gonna still paint it on neck red texture one, but I, for the time being, I have to click up to the, um, to the texture here. Now I'm gonna make a selection and this is what you do all the time. You, nothing is perfect in this application. You have to fix it. So I'm going to make a selection of the neck, just like I told you. I'm going to now click and I'm going to hit Command J on the um, clicky copy. So I've now made a layer all by itself of the neck reference. Do you see it? Now what I'm going to do is hit Command L and I'm going to level this off so there's more contrast of tone in the neck area. Now I wouldn't paint that color, but do you see if I make a higher contrasted version, do you see how I may be able to grab that color better than I did a few seconds ago? So let's make a selection of the neck again. Let's ask color range to go grab not the color, well I didn't say that right. Let's use that color to make a selection let me tone it down and isolate it out like this. And now when I click OK, do you see how it's gotten more of that particular area that I wanted? So now I can save that selection as my neck middle reds. I can't think of anything else to say but I'm still going to hit Command H. Now I'm gonna turn off this reference. Now I would never paint in that red. I'm gonna go use the real clicky copy to go grab that color. And again, I told you I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. So I'm hitting the B key, the Option key. I'm gonna grab that color that's right there. And then I'm gonna click the color picker and I'm gonna make it slightly darker, but in the same hue pattern, okay, in the same tone. So now, and I'm only painting at 8% on the flow, I probably should put it down to 5% on the flow. And if it doesn't show up, we'll make it show up. So I'll, what I mean by that is I'll go darker. So let me hit the B key. Let's go down to that neck texture one layer. And now let's see if that color is going to show up better here. And you see how it does? Now I've got that, there is her neck color took me a little bit to get it but it was the right thing now I don't have it red enough I don't have it red enough so I need to do a couple of things so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, delete everything off of this neck texture layer I'm gonna hit command A to select all and hit the delete key now it's gone because I didn't feel like making a new layer but I'm gonna redo the selection like this now I'm going to hit Command H to hide it. We're gonna go grab a real reddish tone, make it much more red like this up in that corner right there. Now let's go paint that on here and now that's the color that I'm searching for. There is the color that I want. And now I may need to go back to that reference to grab the bottom one 
because that's, you know, you, nothing is perfect, as I said before. Now, what I really am talking about is that color is much different than this color down here. So let's go see if we can make a second one of that. And this is, again, the kind of thing that you need to do. So I'm clicking up to that value. I really want to grab, I'm going to zoom in, I want to grab this color in this lighter area. Now, I may grab it up in other places, but I'm only going to paint it in that area. I want to grab that color right there, I believe. So we have to make a selection of that area. So I now have a selection of the neck. Let's ask color range to get me a better, at least one that's targeted in the area I want. Let's ask color range to grab that pixel right there. Maybe I'll just do it a little bit better. I'm really going to zoom into that pixel right there. Okay, I think I did a good job. Now let's hit OK. Yes. Now do you see how that grabbed this one? Let's call that neck reds lower. And now, there's no reason why I can't paint it on the same layer. Okay, so I'm going to hit Command H. I have the selection. I certainly don't want to paint in that bright of a red, so let me turn off the neck reference. Whoops, wrong thing. Let me turn off that layer we just made. Now let's go down to turn off um, the clicky copy so I can see what I'm doing. Now I want to make this be the right color, so let's um, turn on the reference or go here and get it to right here. So let's go grab this reference color, let me zoom in, right here. And then I'm going to make it a bit redder. So I'm actually going to just force it over in the color picker a bit redder, if that's the right way to say it, I don't know. So let's go back over here. Now with a brush about this big, let's paint that down in this area. And then I'm going to get slightly darker with the value and I'm going to come through here with it. And let's see what we're doing. I think that's looking good actually. Let me go grab that same color, make it a little bit darker like I did before, because I want to come back through here. Let me hit Command H to see how encompassing it is, meaning how wide, um, wide it is. Make a bigger brush and now let's paint it in here. Let's come across this way with it. And now I think the other one is going to be fine. And if I gauge and blur this and I lower the opacity of this, that's going to look terrific. So I'm going to go to the neck, but I'm not going to do it yet. I'm going to go to the darker, I, my finger, my hand just might have thumped the mic. I'm so sorry. Now I'm going to go to the darker value. So before I continue on, I'm going to go do what I said I was going to do. You always have to finish. Remember, get past that 75% stage. So let's go grab this darker value and let's command click it. Let me click back over to this. Let me um, grab that darker value, hit command H, and now I'm painting on a different layer. And let's now put that darker value up here. Let's see if that's actually, oh yeah, that's actually making a lot happen in there. So let's go over here and let's, I want to make sure I didn't put any on the face. Yeah, I didn't. Well, I can't because the, this is um, the neck um, layers are below the face fill. So now let's go grab the darkest one. So that's looking really nice. Let's go to the darkest one. Let me go to the neck dark texture, which is that one. Let's go grab this darker texture here and hit Command H. And let me see if I have any that's going to be underneath here. Oh yeah, yeah, there's some that's coming um, where I'm painting is right here. Do you see all that beautiful stuff right there? Okay, now let's go over here. Let me hit Command H to see if it's there. And now let's put it over here. And I am good with that. That looks really pretty. Now what I want to do is I want to gosh and blur that a little bit and then remove some of the opacity. So um, right currently, none of these layers have a layer mask. So I'm going to deselect, click the first one, add a layer mask, the second one, layer mask, the third one, a layer mask. So what I want to do is um, I want to take the first one, which is this dark right here. Yes, it's this dark. Okay, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to turn on this one, which is the middle one, and I'm going to 
um, eliminate a little bit of that tone off of this right here off of the first one so with black in my brush at five percent on the tone I'm just gonna paint black on here and just eliminate just a little bit of this I'm now kind of I guess the expression is I'm killing it but that's okay let me turn that off okay I need to get rid of it some more so I'm gonna I either could use opacity on the layer or just kind of just tone that back a little bit now what I want to do is deselect click on the image go to filter blur and blur that by one or two pixels so all the way down to one pixel a little bit more than one pixel and I'm gonna click now what I did was I just blurred my texture just a little bit I'm gonna click up to the texture number two layer and hit command F and the texture number three layer and hit command F to make sure that I actually did that and I got it really well so there is my neck fill so far now let me turn off the neck reference layer and let's go now lay in the tone for the shirt I hope I can get this done in one movie but let me make my layer bigger turn off the neck I'm gonna move the shirt above the um, the neck area and I already have a shirt fill layer now I drew the shirt let me find it in here I drew the shirt Let me see where I have shirt only. So I came over here and I actually had, I made a series of channels from the series of um, selections um, of paths that I actually drew and I'm looking for the skin area. So I'm going to, I'm going to turn on the clicky copy and I'll, um, sorry about that. <laughs> It's my son's dog who is now barking away. I'm going to pause it and then I'll come right back. Okay, I'm back. Hopefully you didn't continue to hear Gunner barking and hopefully it paused. So um, in order to make different selections, and I isolated all the blue of the shirt even behind the hair and look at how I actually went up the hair and right to her where her ear is because that's all dark in there. I can blend with higher layers layer and blend out edges of things and that's what layer masks are for okay but I actually made a skin area look at how um, I drew a path that was for her hand and her um, arm for her neck and for her shoulder now what I did was I subtracted that this particular thing from a bigger let me see what I can even remember what I did here um, I actually oh yes and then I actually have where did I put the upper hair oh there it is okay so see I made a shirt layer a shirt path but the shirt path was like it was really big okay and it wasn't really drawing I want to say why I did what I did but I don't want to take a long time to do it I made a path that was rough that encompassed this area where I'm actually circling let me get closer do you see this area right there that I'm circling that I actually drew accurately and then you see this area that I drew accurately right down here so my point is is I can subtract the shoulder I can subtract the lacy area I can subtract the neck and subtract the head from it do you understand so look I can go up to the head and subtract it command minus now I've got that subtracted if you saw what that did that subtracted it now if I go to the neck area and subtract that I've now subtracted the neck area so in essence all I have to do is find the shoulder um, the lacy area that I did which I can't remember where I put it let me see if I have it right down here I don't want to take a long time to find this clothing right there so if I subtract that there now I have the shape so I, I held command option or control alt and I kept on subtracting things the reason I like to do it and I told you I would tell you is because I like the I have an adage I have a um, thing you have to hear never draw one line of something more than once because most likely you'll never get it accurate the for this the, the you'll never completely duplicate the drawing you did so don't try 
Use them as subtractions, additions, intersections, or exclusions, and you can subtract one path from another, add them together, intersect them together, and you know what I mean. So what I did there was I saved that selection as shirt only, see it right there? And now I can deselect or just go back to my shirt fill area and then I can make a selection of that again. Whoops, I hit the wrong button. And now I can cl click back over and there it is. So now I'm going to, in front of you, make the texture layers for the shirt. I want like three texture layers of the shirt. So before I, and I don't have to make a separate layer for it because I'm not going to um, have to um, level it. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to show you, we're going to make a dark one first. So I'm going to use color range by clicking up to the clicky lighter copy and I'm going to go into color range as quickly as I can and I want to make in front of you three selections. One is going to be, I need that to go up to about 70. One is going to be for the dark. So we're going to call this shirt blue, shirt dark. So let's go like this and now we go to select and save it as shirt dark. Now, I don't need the color because I know where it is. You know what I mean? So let's make a selection of the shirt again. If I can find that. Okay, let me find that. That's the neck. Okay, shirt only. Make a selection of the shirt only. We're clicked still on the clicky copy. Let's go to color range. Let's make the second one, which is going to be the dark value that I see about right here. So click Mr. Sorio, and now you have the dark value wherever you need that dark value. We'll make it go up, no, 80 is fine. Now I have the dark value. So let's call this shirt blue, shirt dark, shirt blue dark, I guess, I don't know. So I told you to name them the way that you would be able to find them. So let's go, if we have shirt dark, let's go shirt, let's go shirt blue one, just so I know the next one is gonna be blue two. Now, and I don't have to save it because I know where the color is, okay? It can be a myriad of different dark blues, which is okay. Now let's deselect, let's go down and find the shirt again, which is right there. Let's, we're still clicked on the clicky copy. Let's go to color range. Let us now zoom in and get the light value. So let me come over here and now let's grab this light value. Now I may need a couple more, uh, one more. I'm gonna get that value right there. So there is the light value, but not the lightest value. So let's go to okay. Let's save that as what did I name these? I have to cancel that for a second. I forget. Shirt blue one to shirt blue two. I'm gonna double click this. Command C. Let's click up to the clicky copy again. Let's go down to save selection, Command V, and let's go blue two, there. Now, um, all right, something unique just happened and I want you to understand what just happened. You can only save 58 channels. On the 59th channel, it opens up a new file, and that's what just happened. So I have to Command W that, and I'm not going to save it. So if I want to save any more channels, which I do, I want to save two more, I have to start throwing stuff away. Now I want you to understand something. I've already used Mouth Red 1, Mouth Red 2, Mouth Red 3, and I already have those on a different file. So if I wanted to be really good here, I would hit Command S to save. Just listen to what I'm going to do. I'm going to save as, I keep, I've got to wait for it to save. I'm going to save as, as my um, EF. So here is my next one. I've already done A, B, C, D, and E. Now I have F. Now on the E version, I know that I have mouth red one. So I'm going to throw away mouth red one, mouth red two, and mouth red three and four. So I don't have them but I have them on another file. So now if I go back and save this selection, watch this. I go save selection, command V, let's go to number two, boom. It's now in the channel palette. So I'm gonna have to start throwing other things away as I'm finished painting them. Now let me deselect, let's go back up and go to the shirt and let's save the highlight color. So are we selected Mr. Sorio on the clicky copy? Answer yes, select, save selection, whoops. 
not that selection let's go to color range I forgot now let's zoom in and get the light value let's call the light value I know it'll grab this but I really want this too so I'm gonna up it and make sure I get all the light value now I've got all the light value and let's go select say selection command V let's go to three and let's go highlights okay so those are how I my layer should be named now the but is I need to give it a foundation so um, let me deselect and I think I've already made a shirt reference it's right there so um, I'm going to move my shirt reference with deselected and clicking on the shirt reference let me go to the V key and let's um, take this and oh <laughs> I was already moving it uh, I got to turn this off and now here is her shirt reference and I can take command T it was underneath the uh, clicky copy and I can move the shirt reference over here just so I have the colors to use I'll put them up here so now I have the colors to use up here let me put them right in her face there because I know there's no shirt in her face so let me now turn on the clicky copy and you can see how I can see my colors and I see where they're supposed to go so let's go down here and let us um, I don't really like how I did that I might turn that off go back to the clicky copy let me take the M key and let me make one that includes that area I, I know I I'm making a change here but that's okay I don't like what I did there so I'm gonna um, hit the return key let's hit command J now let's turn off the clicky copy let's hit command T let's make the smaller to include her neck so I can see what's going on there and now I like that area better I like what I've done there better now let's zoom into that so I can now paint the values I need to paint so let's go down to where the shirt fill is we know we can turn this on let's hit the B key let's find a medium value in the in the let's find a medium value here it's going to be the dark value but not the lightest value or the darkest value. it's the medium blue that I can see there and now we can start to alter it okay so in the shirt fill area let's make a selection of the shirt fill shirt only now in this case I should be able to just hit option delete so let's turn this off and just go option delete now I have made um, different paths for the shirt so um, I've already drawn clothing I called it clothing no I called it shirt dark one so I have a path for shirt dark one I want to show it to you so um, because I'm going to clip all these layers to shirt fill so if I'm going to zoom in so you can see this so now I want to show you what the what the what that one is so now that's going to allow me to paint the darkness and start to establish a little bit more of this dark right here so what I'm going to do is paint with this on but I'm going to show you messy and then I'm going to clip it so if you look up here to the left I hit command H and now I can paint this dark in here and you know it's not gonna look good until it's 75 percent completed now what I should be painting is with clicky on if you remember what I said so I'm gonna actually paint with clicky on and you can see that I'm not even gonna worry about how it's looking let me come straight down here and let's now flood this area in here I'm only painting with that blue I'll turn off clicky so you can see how I've now started to establish that blue let's flood it in here in this case I am gonna flood it so it gets nice and dark in here okay now let's look at it now let's come through here and paint it in here let me go to this one right there and let's now make it come back like this stick with it because it's not gonna look good until it's 75 percent completed let's now turn this off and keep on looking how we're doing okay let me see command H and let's see where we're painting so now I have to turn this off okay command H is right here so let's go like this okay I see what I'm painting right there that nice darkness right there 
And now let's flood this area over here. I'm gonna turn off the little teensy weensy reference that we just had. I'm gonna turn off the clicky copy and then I'm going to start laying out this value. Now, do you see how this is getting all messy right there? If I hold the option key and click between the two of these layers, um, Okay, um, I better hit Command S to save because Photoshop is doing something funny. My option key wasn't giving me, oh, finally it is. Um, I had to click away from something. Now I'm, I've clipped it and that should be fine there. Whoops, do you know I made a mistake? Okay, um, I did what you're gonna do <laughs> all the time. Um, and it's probably because I was in the movie, right? <laughs> um, I painted everything on, I wasn't painting on shirt number two, I was painting on shirt fill. So I'm gonna just redo it. It's only gonna take a second. How do I make it better? Okay, well, I got the color back. I'm gonna hit Command A to select all and I'm gonna delete it off of there. That was a pain. So now I'm gonna Command click that again and hit Option Delete, fine. Now I'm clicking to shirt number two layer. That was very silly. Now let's go to shirt number two darks and shirt darks. And let me make a selection of shirt darks one. Now let me hit command H um, after I turn off clicky copy and oh boy we get to do exactly the thing over again. And you know what? I don't mind that. I really don't mind that because I mean do I want to do things over again on screen? No. The answer is absolutely not. But it's okay that I didn't, that I screwed up because you're gonna find yourself painting on multiple layers. And then, you know, you're gonna make the same mistake that I did. So now let's turn off the clicky copy and let's see that I'm almost back exactly within minutes, seconds, where I actually was. So let me grab this value. Let's now paint it up here. Let's paint it down here. Let's now flood it in here. And this is what I want to do in the first place. I'm going to deselect and I'm going to, because this is clipped to the shirt fill layer, all I have to do is back off on it and then I'm going to flood this color in here because if I ever get dark with it, which I'm going to, this color is underneath the dark anyway. So I'm going to flood that in here just like this so I'm starting to get darker with that. I now know that this back area needs to go darker and you can see how I'm starting to lay in all of my values. Let's go to shirt three. Let's clip it first. Click on shirt three. Let me go to the, let me um, turn on the reference layer and let me see where my shirt darks are. So let me command click on this. Okay, that's the real dark back there. And let's click on this. That's another series of darks. So let's go here and let's go here. Now, what I want to do is turn off the clicky copy and see how I'm doing. Then deselect and now let's turn this even darker like this. Let's now go darker like this. And let me turn on this. Now I'm going to command click the shirt darks again, which is now that dark. Let me hit command H so now I can really hit that hard right here. Remember, I've got Gaussian Blur to use. I'm going to do just fine. So when you lay in your foundation values, your job is to lay them in as good as you can. I may have to cut a, cut a, draw a couple more. Um, I may have to draw a couple more paths for the shirt dark. So let me turn on the clicky copy, see what I'm doing here. Okay, so this has to get much darker over here. Whoops, I hit the key, not the bracket tool. So let me get darker over here. Let's now um, paint on shirt dark four and I'm going to start getting some more of the definitive little wrinkle darks. So let me zoom in and let me grab this dark right there. Let's see if I can isolate out that area. Yeah, I did. Let me hit command H and now I'm going to start laying in the fills freehanded. So you can see how I'm laying in the wrinkles relatively freehanded, which is fine. It's going to look nice. So let me come up and down like this. Let's make it bigger. And then we're going to let the texture do the work. Now I'm going to paint a lot on this layer, I think. Look what I've got going all already. See how I've started to have that going? Now 
let me make the brush bigger and let's flood this top right here flood around the side now I'm gonna turn on turn off the clicky copy and I can um, use the little reference layer right there to have both on the screen now we know that this needs to get darker right here we know that this needs to really get dark right here and it needs to get darker from that part of the collar over. So I don't know if I have that drawn yet and there's a couple of things that I wanna do. So I'm gonna take the deselect, hit the P key, and we're gonna come in here and we're gonna draw this darker just like this. Look at how I'm coming straight down this collar, just like this, right to the top of that wrinkle and then off the page. Now watch how I'm gonna quickly make a selection or a, um, a filled path of that Let's come over here, and I think I actually want to do, um, what did I just say to myself that I wanted to include? But anyway, I'm going to go down to the path palette, double click it, name it shirt dark. I think I'm on four. Now what I should do is move that up this palette until I get to where the shirt darks are. So you can see here, here, I'm gonna put it right, in fact, I was on Shirt Dark 4. So let me make a selection of that. Let's hit Command H. Let's turn off the clicky copy. Let's make sure we're painting in that nice dark color, which we are, and now I'm gonna hit the side of this, and we're gonna hit it quite hard, coming up the side, and now I'm starting to really get that color in there. Now, um, uh, you know what? I wasn't painting on Shirt Dark 4. I was painting on Shirt Dark 3, but that's okay because it really did belong on Shirt Dark 3. Now, um, I hit the mic again with my finger, with my hand. I'm sorry. So let's um, go to Shirt Dark 4, and I want to go turn the clicky copy on, and let's go grab this dark. Remember, it's not going to look good until it's 75% completed at least. You're probably getting tired of me saying that. Let's hit Command D to deselect, make the brush bigger, and then I'm going to really get that dark going in there. So I need that dark to be real clean. Let me deselect. Okay. I have um, some overspray caused right here, which is part of the face, and it's hiding the dark that I'm putting in. Let me um, show you what I'm talking about in a second. But let me come in here and let's now get this dark, real dark. Is that the darkest dark? Let me go to a blue dark, just like this. Now let's hit that dark nice and hard. Um, I have to isolate that because I'm hurting the back of that shirt. I'm hurting the front of that shirt right here. So let me hit Command H. And now let's click on this. Okay, there's something over my layer which is causing me not to get as black as I want with it. Mm, I'm pay oh, opacity. Somehow the opacity, whoa, watch this. Boom. <laughs> the opacity got to 40%. So um, I must have hit a quick key that got me to the, I knew I was painting dark. Um, I have a little bit of overspray both here and there. So I'm going to hit deselect. We're going to get rid of the overspray in two seconds by clicking a shirt for layer mask and then I'm gonna clean up that color right here clean it up so now that's cleaned up now this color that's right over this dark that's for f something on the face isn't clipped so I have to deselect hit the V key right hand click right there and it's on layer 34 or at least part of it is on layer 34 right there so um, I have a and that is in the eye area. So in the eye area, what I need to do is to click on layer 34's mask. <clears throat> See how easy that was to get to. And let's actually now eliminate it off of there. So I'm painting on layer 34's mask, which I should have named. And now I have the shirt started in a blocked in area. Now we're going to, um, we are going to, um, start to add some of the nuances in that shirt and we're going to use some of the texture and then 
I'm going to have to come back and do some painting, but I think this movie is getting a little too long, so um, I'm going to deselect, um, turn off the eye area so I can get back to my shirt area. Then I'm going to deselect, I already said that three times, and I'm going to go here and I'm going to get close on the shirt texture so far. I'm sorry, the shirt 4, 3, 2, and shirt fill layers, and I'm going to blur them. So on this one, I'm going to um, go to Gaussian Blur on shirt 4, and let's make sure it's quite up higher. I think I'll try about 4 point about 5.0 to start with. Now let me click here. Let's click to shirt 3 and hit command F. Let's click to shirt 2 and hit command F. And now let's see what I've done. Okay, that's 5 pixel blur there. That's a 5 pixel blur there. Each one of those is going to need a layer mask and I'm going to have to do some pretty cool um, elimination by painting on the layer mask. And I'm going to let this tell me because obviously now I need to back off on this tone here. So on um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, start painting on the next movie and back off those tones. So I'm on the tone here that got too dark right there. Look at how I'm already kind of um, taking away that tone. Let me go to this layer and take away that tone. Let me turn it off and on, okay? Now if I click the clicky copy, you can see how I want to back off that tone right there and you can see how I am doing so. So let me go smaller and now things need to be refined. They need to be resolved. They need to have a better look to them and this is the time that you actually start to accomplish that. So let me see what I'm doing here, okay? And I need to vignette that back. Let's turn this off. Let's turn this off. Let's click to the layer mask here. Let's tone that down here. And you can see what I'm doing. So now let me turn off the little shirt reference layer, which is right there. And now I'm gonna turn the clicky copy on and off very fast. And you can see that aside from the highlight areas, my blues are pretty close. And I've got a lot of different texturing that I need to do, okay? And some of it I need to bring back, like this area right there, I need to bring back that pretty blue. So when we come back, I'll start bringing back this pretty blue so it looks like that part of the collar right there.